on KOTA, and the Eyewitness Sports Network will go back to Jeff Harkness. Your eggs are getting cold, Doogie. Can't eat, Mom, I'm late. Uh, 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 uh. Three bites of a cookie is no breakfast for a growing boy. But I've got early morning transplant surgery. They're filling in a liver from St. Paul. Did you make your bed? Mom, they're waiting for me in the OR. Oh, Doogie. What would your patients think if they knew their doctor didn't make his bed? Doogie Hauser, MD. Wednesdays on ABC. And take a sweater. Those operating rooms are chilly. back to the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center and this place is rocking the Wildcats and the Smet Bulldogs on the court warming up and while we have a minute we're going to show you what happened this afternoon in the consolation rounds first up you see the Spearfish girls entertaining as Levin and Miller battled in the third quarter wrestlers Joe Mottenbacher hits a three-pointer and Miller takes the lead Lemons Todd Anderson kept Cowboys close he scores on the rebound he had 24 points Star for Miller was Nick Anderson. Watch this fine baseline move. Scoots it up and in. He had 25 points. Ryan Schwartz had the jumper for Miller. He had 18. They down Lemon 79 to 63. South Dakota Snow Queen Christy Arnold cheering on the Hamlin Chargers as they face Platt. It was close till the third quarter when the Chargers took over. Ron Holiday scores two of his 12. Hamlin running. Mark Stevenson to Holiday for the layup as the Chargers made a 21 to 9 run in the third quarter and blew open a close game. Jimmy Vanderwar led the Black Panthers. He had 12 points here. You see number 45 hitting. But Hamlin a little too strong as Mark Stevenson to brother Matt Stevenson. He had 23 points. And the Chargers go on to win easily 80 to 48. So that's what happened this afternoon. Tonight, Red Cloud has just defeated Lennox. So the Crusaders are going to the state championship game. And we're getting ready for Custer and the Smet. And Jeff Harkness has both coaches. Jeff. Thank you, Steve. Red Cloud is in. Custer and Smet would like to join him. The two men are going to coach tonight are with me right now. Larry Luchens, your club did not play well last night in their win over Platt. Are you concerned maybe about another letdown again tonight? No, I'm not concerned at all. We're right where we want to be. We're playing the semifinals. Uh, yeah, it wasn't the greatest game last night, but uh, we're ready to play basketball tonight. Do you tell the players to ignore last night's performance, or do you tell them to keep it in mind and make sure it doesn't happen again? Uh, we didn't even talk about it. Okay, how about are we going tonight against Smet? What do you see from them? Well, uh, they got a lot of quickness. Uh, got an outstanding basketball player on the inside and Cruz. Uh, we got to control him. You never stop somebody like that. They got awfully quick guards. All right, the top team in the state looking to make it 24 in a row tonight. Larry, good luck to you. Marv McCune from DeSmet. You're going against the top team tonight. What do you do against the Wildcats? Well, uh, like I said earlier in an interview, it's too bad they had to play their bad game yesterday. But uh, we're going to go out and push them and do the things we know that got us here and uh, work real hard and try to harass their shooters and. Hopefully, uh, you know, open up Cruz inside on the offense a little bit. You guys played at a very emotional game yesterday against your arch rivals, Hamlin. Any concern at all that the guys might be a little emotionally spent after that game? Well, it was a big game for us, and we were real excited after the game, but uh, we're really ready to play. The kids are really starting to get wound up about 3 o'clock this afternoon. Offensively, uh, you mentioned going into Cruz again. What about the other guys? What do they need to do? Well, more than last night, we need a lot of ball movement and reversal, and, of course, Custer's going to try to stop that, I'm sure. Uh, we need to get the ball to the, you know, the people on the move. Then the perimeter shots come a lot easier. Bill Vincent hit some big shots for us last night, and they really kept us in the ball game when we were struggling offensively until we found Cruz. Okay, Marv, thank you very much. Good luck tonight to the Bulldogs. Just Smet and Custer ready to go at it. Right now we're going to throw it back to Steve. All righty, thank you very much, Jeff. And as the two teams warm up, we will take a break. And then come back and talk a little more about that game. Have a couple features for you, a lot of stuff here at the Plaza and the State A, which you are watching on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network.
back at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center. And we're just trying to relax a little bit between games after Red Cloud and Lennox gave us a real thriller. And Red Cloud pulls it out, 60 to 56. The Crusaders going to the state championship. And all through this tournament, they say they won one team. They want the Custer Wildcats, and the Wildcats have a chance to advance if they can beat DeSmet tonight. Custer has been the number one team in Class A most of the season. And I'll tell you what, made a trip to Custer this week, and there's one thing you can say about those people down there. They are wild about their Wildcats. Take a look. About 40 miles southwest of Rapid City is Custer, South Dakota. Population, 1,800. A town famous for Custer State Park, Flintstones Bedrock City Campground, and the Custer Wildcats, South Dakota's only undefeated high school basketball team. <laughs> This is the Custer High School Gymnasium, where the Wildcats play basketball. What happens in here also affects the people out here in the town of Custer. Yes, they are. They're talking about basketball, and we're number one, right? It's really good for the town. It really is. And uh, the ball team is a good ball team, but the kids are nice kids. That's the important thing. I think it's great. It's a lot better than Ray McNally did to us, or NBC. <laughs> Anytime you get in a, a smaller community that the what goes on in school is really the number one thing in town. It's, in many cases, the only game in town. And so uh, our, uh, our basketball team is, you know, very much a part of uh, Custer and Custer County. Uh, uh, I guess you can tell that by the number of people that come to watch the game. The Custer economy relies a lot on tourism. The past couple months, the basketball team has gotten the town publicity. Being ranked number one is, is good publicity for the uh, community. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, um, get your name uh, uh, in the paper uh, at least once a week, you know, when the polls come out. And so it's, it's good for the community, and uh, uh, maybe we'll bring some more tourists to Custer this summer. Not only do the Wildcats help Custer financially, but they help bring the town together. It helps focus the community. I think it gives the, the community something to belong to and, and uh, back and support. And so I think it brings the community together. In return, the Custer fans give the Wildcats the home court advantage, no matter where they're playing. Oh yeah, it's always great to have people yelling for you, wherever we go. It's really a big difference. It gets us fired up and it gets the adrenaline going. And yep. we know if we play well, the crowd will really back us up and they've been behind us all year. And it's, it's made a difference. It's really helped us. Many of the Wildcat fans have made the trip to Rapid City this weekend. They've come for one reason, to see Custer win the state title. It's just excitement. You know, we're number one. <laughs> we're number one. We're going to do it all the way. Everyone's excited. Custer's been to state before. This time we want to see him go all the way. And they will have that chance if they win tonight. But that's no easy task. You see the DeSmet Bulldogs warming up. And when you think about DeSmet, you think about Brad Cruz. He had a tremendous game last night, 20, uh, 24 points in the first game as DeSmet beat their old buddies Hamlin and uh, it's going to be a tough task for Custer to try to contain him. They'll probably use the shuffling center system, Jeff. The other players we look to will line it up tonight possibly for the Bulldogs. Bill Vincent who had 15 in that ball game. Jason Hine had 15 as well in the win over Hamlin yesterday. Also and, Brian uh, Weiss had 8. As we have the time now, we're going to take a look at the final stats from the first game and uh, this is brought to you by Norwest Bank where you come to expect the best. And uh, field goal shooting as uh, Lennox have them at 15 for 43. So they went mighty cold in the fourth quarter. Actually, these two are reversed. So that's that's the problem. OK, Red Cloud was 15 of 43. Lennox 23 of or Red Cloud rather 23 of 36. So Lennox shot the ball a little less effectively than Red Cloud. And Lennox really had his problems in the fourth quarter when uh, Lennox went just six for 13 free throws as uh, Lennox was 17 for 23, so they got the line a little more. Turnovers, really not the story tonight, I don't think. 
The no, it wasn't at all. It, it was, was shooting just, mainly. Was Lennox shooting. hit that cold streak in the second half and couldn't quite get out of it in time. As we take a look at the scoring rundown, and uh, Lennox, Timmerman, and McCormick both had nine points at the end of the third quarter, and they finished with nine, so they couldn't get anything to go in the fourth. Sheldon Fletcher had six points in the fourth quarter, so he really came to the four. For Red Cloud, the trio of LeBeau and Fairbanks and then Ruben Brown also had a pretty good game. And uh, Fairbanks, Cooney, LeBeau, the top scorers every night, and uh, 20 points by Jude Fairbanks. He had a tremendous fourth quarter, three for three from the field, and ended up with 20 points. So Red Cloud advances the Cinderella story, first time ever in the state championships. And uh, they said they want Custer. They did play Custer in the Lakota Nation Tournament in the final, which is played right here at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center earlier in the season. And Custer beat them 59 to 53. Last year, those two teams also played in the Lakota Nation final with pretty much the same players we have this year. And Red Cloud won it. So they feel like uh, they have Custer's number. They can beat the Wildcats. And the Wildcats, as we look at the South Dakota Snow Queen, Christy Arnold from Hamlin. They first have to get by to Smet, does Custer, and that's no easy task to Smet. Put away Hamlin yesterday. And uh, we'll take a look at Larry Luchens there. We will be setting up this game in full. Coming up after this timeout, just want to remind you, you're watching the State A High School Basketball Tournament in prime time on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. This is an Eyewitness News Update. Will Sioux Falls be speeding up or slowing down? Good evening, I'm Kelly Eggers. And I'm Tom Rooney. Among the stories in Eyewitness News tonight after the basketball tournament games, a preview of the results of a Sioux Falls speed limit study. How busy will peer legislators be on their last day of this year's session? And land in Minnesota. Why won't anyone claim it? There's more reason to watch Eyewitness News tonight. Technology, expertise, state-of-the-art diagnostic and surgical equipment, and excellent care all describe the quality health services found in Aberdeen. Over 2,000 healthcare professionals in a wide variety of specialties work hard to provide quality care day in and day out close to home. Isn't it nice to know that Aberdeen's healthcare professionals are there, providing you with the care you need when you need it? Aberdeen, your partner in healthcare. Back at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center, there you see the Custer Wildcats going through the warm-ups and the Bulldog cheerleaders from DeSmet. Jeff, how do you see this matchup? DeSmet and Custer. Custer 23-0, DeSmet 19-2. What, what, what are the keys? I think as we touch down with the two coaches, I think emotion is going to play a big part in this one. The, the teams, I believe, are pretty equally matched. Mm -hmm. It's going to come down to how much DeSmet has left after their big one over Hamlin last night and how much Custer can dig down deep and try to rebound from their disappointing performance in the game yesterday against Platt. For Custer uh, against Platt, they, they put up a good effort, not a great effort by, by no stretch, but their shooting was just horrendous. In the third quarter, Custer, known as great shooters, could not find the basket. Well, the biggest problem was two of their best players, Lance Luchens and Trevor Long, went on a hibernation. The, between the two of them, they were one for nine from the field in that third quarter. In yeah, fact, he, Custer only scored eight, eight points in the third quarter, and uh, luckily they were able to hang on and win, luckily for Custer fans. If you were with us last night, you may recall in the fourth quarter, Lance Luchens went out with an ankle sprain. He did come back in the game and uh, make a couple free throws. We checked, and uh, Lance looks pretty good. His ankle seems fine, and he will start. So uh, that really should not be a factor in the ball game. I have a feeling even if he had to get out there on crutches, he would have gone tonight. And, and the thing about Lance, an injured ankle is not, ankle is not going to affect him as much as, say, like a Trevor Long, who will be cutting to the basket, will be driving down the lane. Luchens does most of his work on the outside. He, he's not a uh, left and right player. He goes north and south. He does not do a lot of cutting, not a lot of a quick stopping. So the ankle probably won't affect him as much as it would, say, your traditional driving point guard. The thing about Custer is you get the feeling they play to the level of their competition. They did Sometimes last night. with great teams, you do get into that habit. And last night against Platt, admittedly not one of the great teams here at the tournament, judging by their 13-8 and record, Custer basically played not only to their level, but also to their speed. 
Yeah, and also, Platt was able to walk the ball up and down the court pretty much at will, and, and Platt played a phenomenal ball game, no question say, about it. See, the other side of that equation is uh, the Black Panthers pulled out all the stops, put together probably one of their finest performances of the year, and they gave the top team in the state a huge scare. And you know, if you're a Platt fan, you gotta feel pretty good, because as we touched on uh, yesterday, Platt's a young ball club. They had two seniors, and after that, just one junior, and then everybody else is freshmen and sophomores. So Frank Cutler, the future's great for the Platt Black Panthers. You had a look there uh, just moments ago at Shad Corner and his knee brace. Shad Corner was the starting post player for Custer in the beginning of the season, the 6'6 senior. And then he went down with a knee injury on this very floor in the Lakota Nation tournament. Went through a pretty long rehabilitation process and just got back in the lineup very late in the season. But Shad played last night and looks pretty good working on that knee as he had eight points in the ball game and was one of the few Custer Wildcats to uh, play a pretty strong game. We got a look at the DeSmet Bulldog moments ago. The Custer Wildcat is also here. Two of the better looking mascots in South Dakota High School sports representing their teams here tonight. Also a faithful contingent of fans. And it'll be interesting to see, Steve, the Custer fans were rooting for Red Cloud, as were the Lemon fans in that first game. We're developing a little bit of an east-west rivalry here. The West River teams, Lemon, Red Cloud, and Custer seeming to band together to root for their schools. The West River teams, I've noticed fans here from Miller tonight, also fans from Lennox, fans from DeSmet, also probably fans from Hamlin, taking uh, on the side of the West River schools. Or well, no, take it back to East River schools. Uh, no question the Red Cloud will be rooting for Custer. They want the Wildcats in the final. They feel that uh, that would just add icing on the cake if they win a state title to beat their old buddies from Custer who they have had some uh, heated rivalries with in the past as Custer jogs off the floor and DeSmet going through their final preparations. This is a very, very interesting matchup. When you look at the Bulldogs, the name Brad Cruz comes immediately to mind. A 25-point-per-game score, a 12-rebound-per-game player. He had 24, the NCC. Many co coaches from the North Central Conference trying to entice Brad Cruz to come play college ball. He had 24. He's a great leaper. And on the other side for Custer, you're going to ask Mike Dorton to try to contain, maybe slow down is a better word, Brad Cruz just a little bit. Mike Dorton, not known for his offense, but he says there in the Civic Center he can jump six inches higher than anywhere else. And he'll have to do that to uh, try to contain Brad Cruz. I think I wouldn't be surprised if Custer says to Mike Dorton, Mike, don't worry about offense. We'll let Trevor and Lance and the other people worry about the offense. You go out there and you stop Brad Cruz. Yeah, I think what we're going to see is we're going to see a matchup of DeSmet's inside game with Cruz going against the outside shooting of Luchens and Long. And whoever wins that battle more than likely will come out on top of the ball game. I think you're right. And uh, looks like we're about ready to meet the starting lineup. So we will turn it over to the PA announcer, Ron Anderson. Good evening again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second game of tonight's South Dakota Boys State A Basketball Championships. Our final game this evening features the Bulldogs of DeSmet. And the Wildcats of Custer. Here are the starting lineups for the DeSmet Bulldogs. At one guard, 5'9", senior, number 20, Brian Weiss. At the other guard, 5'10", senior, number 32, uh, Jason Hines. At one forward, 5'11", senior, number 24, Bill Vincent. At the other forward, 6'1", junior, number 44, Jeremy Campbell. And at center, 6'5", senior, number 40, Brad Cruz. The Bulldogs are coached by Marv McCune, assisted by Pat Wheeler. And now introducing the starting lineup for the Wildcats of Custer High School. At one guard, 6'2", sophomore, number 25, Lance Luchens. At the other guard, 6'4", senior, number 33, Trevor Long. 
one forward, 6'2", senior, number 21, uh, Justin Wallstrom. At the other forward, 6'1", senior, number 35, Travis Lip. And at center, 6'6", junior, number 51, Mike Dorton. The Wildcats are coached by Larry Luchens, assisted by Neil Seeger. Officials for the game, Steve Whithorn and Mike Weissup. You had a look at Larry Luchens. He knows about Platt all uh, pretty well, as you see the two officials. He coached Platt to the state B title in 1970-71. So uh, I think Larry knows his way to the Bulldog country. <laughs> And uh, before we get started, we want to mention that this tournament is being conducted under the auspices of the South Dakota High School Activities Association. Custer is in there traveling purple. Desmet is in there, home white. Brad Cruz and Mike Dorton will jump it up. And Cruz controls the tip. This is the Bulldogs. Jace, uh, Brian Weiss, rather, number 20, will set it up. Goes over to Hine. They'll try to get it in to guess who? Cruz fires it outside. Vincent. First shot put him up, up by Campbell. He missed it. And here come the Custer Wildcats on the break. Trevor Long into the front court. And he loses it. And back comes Jason Hine the other way. And I think the Bulldogs will just slow it down and set it up. Go to the power game. Obviously, they like what Platt did yesterday in controlling the tempo against Custer. They're going to take a book out of the Black Panthers playbook tonight. And there's a steal by Travis Lip. He'll Each team with one turnover now. Trevor Long, he's the quarterback of the ball club. He also quarterbacks the football team, by the way. Travis Lip looking inside. Back outside to Trevor Long. Custer is a pretty good outside shooting club. That's what they like to do. And we'll see if, of course, the thinking might be to go to Dorton a little bit as Trevor Long throws up a shot and hits. And that is a good sign for Custer because Trevor Long was cold last night. Interesting defense that time down by DeSmet. Brad Cruz camping out in the lane. He's not even going to guard Mike Dorton. And here we see Cruz underneath. Blocked by Wallstrom, but a foul whistle. Ball will go inside to Cruz. The pass nicely over Dorton's head, and Wallstrom just comes down on Brad. And they're going to call it a shooting foul, and the crowd is Cruz will go to the line for two. Brad Cruz, 6'5", senior. And you'll be seeing his face all night. That's got to be where DeSmet is going to look for offense. Hits his first. 2-1 our score, just underway. He misses the second, but it's run down by Hine. Back out to Cruz, and we'll set it up again with Brian Weiss. Custer in a 2-3 zone. Probably to help out down on the blocks with Cruz. They are doubling him. Dorton on one side. Luchin's behind him. When they go this side, Walster behind him. Dorton in front of him. Campbell back to Hine. Back to Weiss. Bakes. Shakes and bakes. And now Hine down on the baseline. Outside. Vincent throws up a three and misses. And a battle underneath. And Campbell comes up with a big rebound. We'll try it again. Underneath. Cruz wide open. Misses the shot. Fouled by Wallstrom. And that is... I believe his second personal foul. And already, Custer having problems controlling Brad Cruz. Desmet in the early going, showing a nice uh, ball movement inside. Cruz, the second time he's been able to get it underneath, and the second time he'll have a chance to go to the line. And uh, quickly, Wallstrom out of the game with his two fouls, and Dale Lienefelter goes in, 43, the six-foot senior, and Cruz back to the line. Makes the first. And we are tied, 2-2. Makes the second, so he's now three or four from the line, has all the points for DeSmet. Custer back in the front court, Trevor Long working against Jason Hine. This is Lance Luchens looking in, nobody open. We'll see if they try to get the ball to Dorton, maybe get pick up a foul on Cruz, although Cruz has shown good sense in uh, going for the ball. Trevor Long off glass, tough shot. Trevor now with four, all four points. And Thus far in the early going, it's Trevor Long and Brad Cruz putting on a show. And Long is two for two. Again, one three, or a two, two three. Campbell launches from the baseline. No good. Rebounded underneath by Vincent. Trapped underneath there. Gets it back to Hine. And he will fire it all the way across to Campbell. 
and Ryan Weiss will set it up again for the Bulldogs, working against that zone. Campbell so far in the early going has gotten the shots, but he's 0 for 2. There he is again. He did not score last night. Dribble drive. Steal. Yep. First turnover for the Smet. Back comes the Custer Wildcats. Trevor Long with the basketball. Trevor Long had an unbelievable semifinal last year. Scored 36 points. So maybe he likes those semifinal games. As Custer has been to the state tournament three times and come in second three times, foul whistle. Against Stein, that is his first. And the second on to Smet. And we are going to take a timeout. 4.54 left to go first quarter. Custer leading to Smet. 4-3. You're watching the State A Boys Basketball Tournament on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. Across South Dakota, people have come to expect the best from the people of Norwest Bank. Because Norwest people help build their communities. In Aberdeen, that means creating new opportunity through economic development. Helping fund a new chapel at Dakota Wesleyan University in Mitchell. Or helping to build the hearts and minds of tomorrow's leaders in Sioux Falls. Come to expect the best. Always. From the people at your community, Norwest Bank. Johnson Motors in Aberdeen, the A-League dealer. 18 consecutive years of award-winning service. A, believing people should be treated with respect by offering everyday low prices and no gimmicks. A, full service for all your automotive needs. A, excellent selection of Oldsmobile Cadillac, Pontiac, and GMC vans, Suburbans, and trucks. A, 71 years of commitment to you. A, Johnson Motors, making the grade in Aberdeen's Auto Plaza. Visit them today and see the difference. They will earn your business every day. Back at the Rushmore Civic Center, and yes, Custer is number one. They may be after tonight, they may not be. As Trevor Long goes to the free throw line, that was the first team foul, it was a shooting foul on Jason Hine. Trevor Long hits the first, he is a 77% free throw shooter. There's really not a whole lot Trevor Long can't do with a basketball, he's very good at just about everything you could ask. Shooter, penetrator, assist man, and free throw shooter. He's got all six Wildcat points so far. Here come the Bulldogs, and once again, look for number 40 down on the blocks. Brad Cruz working tough against a couple guys. He gets it now, puts it up, and he's fouled. And talk about your collapsing defense. <laughs> Looks like our lips going to pick up the personal, number 35. Again, the Desmet Bulldogs looking at number 40. He flashes open for just a moment. Three guys converge on him, and they're going to say that it was lip from behind. First personal on Travis. In the purple C. Brad Cruz connects. And we talked about this before the game. When Brad Cruz gets it down there, they're just simply going to foul him. Well, uh, it's they not working so line. far because he's five or six from the line. And DeSmet trails it by one. Interesting that none of those fouls have been picked up by Dorton, the man who's supposed to be guarding him. You so can see what kind of help they're giving. It's Trevor Long, six. Brad Cruz, five. And then Travis Lip hits a two-pointer. And Custer shooting pretty well tonight. They're three of three. The Smet back. And Chad Karna ready to check in for Custer with the revolving door in the post. See what he can do against Cruz as a shot put up, missed by Hine. But there he is. Score it plus the foul. Brad Cruz, the one-man wrecking crew. The first field goal of the ball game for the Bulldogs comes at the 408 mark. And again, it's Brad Cruz underneath. The shot goes up. Great rebounding position inside. Goes up strong, and that's why the NCC coaches are drooling over this prospect. Puts it back up with authority and draws the foul as well. First personal that time whistled on Dale, Dale Lennefelter. They, they wanted to hack him and make him miss. He was still able to muscle it up. And here we go again, Brad Cruz. His seventh free throw of the game. Uh, no space in the column anymore for him. But he misses. Custer leads it by one. Want to look for scoring. Here's the guy, Trevor Long. Pass underneath corner. Can't come up with it. Brad Cruz with a steal. The man is everywhere. Behind. Takes it in strong against Long and misses. Cruz can't come up with it, and Custer will come back. Lance Luch is setting up for a three, but it'll go to Lip. He'll fire it up, and he misses. But Karna comes up with the rebound. And here's Trevor Long from way outside. Misses. And a foul. Called on Karna. 
two missed shots in a row there by Custer. They had a couple chances, couldn't quite get one to go. Wallstrom will ch check back in. No, he won't. And now he'll check in, and we'll check the replay on this. Already free throw time for the Smith Bulldogs. The shot goes up, and as you mentioned last night, Steve, a long rebound off a three-pointer. Nice rebounding position that time by Hine, and uh, Carno went over his back. The Smet, they're just glad to be at the line because they are ice cold from the field. One of six so far in the early going. Ryan Larson gets into the ball game, puts up the free throw and hits it. And there you see Coach Marv McCoon on the Bulldogs. Tie ball game, 8-8, 3.35 left first quarter. Larson with a second free throw. Misses. And here comes Custer. Trevor Long. Lance Luchin's yet to fire up a shot. So Those far, neither team really in what they want to be doing. Smith's been trying to get it into Cruz, but uh, great defense by Custer so far. Karna down on the blocks. And Karna has a big size advantage. Here's Trevor Long wheeling and dealing. He gets the roll. And this is why we were so surprised when Trevor was cold last night. The guy can shoot. Six already for Long. And Here there's we go Cruz. again. Brad Cruz, that's his total. It's easy to see how many points he has. Look at the DeSmet score. He has 10. There's Lance launching one, misses. One shot down that time for the Wildcats, and here come the Bulldogs. Custer's not really a strong rebounding team. In fact, Platt really took him to school on the boards, 42-27 last night. Bulldogs. They'll try to get it to Brad Cruz. Here he is, a little far out for him. Tries to get in closer, but a sea of purple around him. And now Vincent down on the baseline. Lob pass. Nice pass. And another chance for a three-point play. Credit Bill Vincent that time with a nice touch pass underneath. Cruz again in amongst several Custer arms. There's the touch pass by Vincent. Doesn't even come down to the floor. Cruz goes up and gets it. Hacked on the arm by Karna. Shad picks up the second. And again, Cruz goes to the line trying to convert the three-point play. There you see Shad Karna's knee brace. They say he's about 80, 90%. Another free throw for Cruz. And he has 13 points in the first quarter. We said they'd be a matchup problem. Trevor Long misses back for Custer, and here come the Bulldogs. They lead by three. Hine into the paint. Nice move. Puts up a shot. Held ball will go to Custer. Nice defense that time. Jay Steele, who just checked in, grabbing the basketball as uh, Weiss came down the lane. Nice play. As you mentioned, Steve, ball out of bounds to the Wildcats. Brad Cruz giving Custer Fitz matchup problem. They just don't know who to put on him and how to contain him. And now a foul called out away from the basket. Mike Dorton, he's going to give it another try against Brad Cruz. Well, you and I were talking this afternoon, Steve, and I think that one of the strategies you're going to see from Larry Luchens is a rotating door down at the post. Right. He's going to use Dorton. He's going to use Steele. He's going to use Karna. So guys, we have 15 fouls to give. We'll hope Brad misses from the line. Already he's been there seven, eight times already. Eight times. He's Look. hit on six of them. Trevor Long, three-pointer, yes. Trevor Long has 11 points in the quarter. It's Trevor Long's outside shooting and Brad Cruz down low. First three-pointer of the game for either side. Jason Hine looking it over. The zone for Custer. They hope that it helps cut down the inside play. Three-pointer. Larson. By Ryan Larson. He now has four points. He's a big scorer. He's instant offense. He's in there to score, and he does. And now back comes the Custer Wildcats. Back and forth we go. Inside play, Travis Lipp drives the hoop. And he now has four points. Wildcats doing a nice job that time, recognizing uh, Travis open underneath. They get it to him, and he puts it up and in. Let's try again. Way short by Larson. An air ball. Back come the Wildcats. They trail it by one. Wild pass. Went off the hoop, and Larson will run it down, and back come the Bulldogs. Almost looked like a shot. Everywhere Brad Cruz goes, you can expect two purple shirts to be following him at least. In fact, his white uniform may have some purple paint on it by the end of this game. <laughs> Now Mike Dorton's banging on him right now with help from Shad Karna and, and if Justin Walsh. If the Bulldogs can hit some threes, because they're going to be open. Everybody slouching back. Here we go. Shot put up and missed by Weiss.
but it was there. 30 seconds now left, and Custer probably will hold for a last shot. They trail by one. First quarter, 16-15. Look for Trevor Long to do something. Penetrate, dish off, shoot. He's a good one-on-one -on -one player, and Hine is going to try to stop him. 15. 15 seconds. He looks at the clock. Goes to Wallstrom. He'll have his lip. And they should get it to Long any second now. Six seconds. They're trying, but they can't do it. Wallstrom may have to take it himself. Great defense. Puts up the shot. People all around him. And a foul called. We'll check, wait, and see. And he says it was a clean block. So, held ball, and the clock expired. He'll tell Larry Luchin right in front of us what happened. Jeff, take it. Well, we're going to take a look inside here. Clock running out. Wallstrom tried to take it, and Cruz came down and got all ball. All ball, no question. So, we have completed one quarter play. This Met leads Custer 16-15. You're watching the State A High School Basketball Tournament on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. Hello. There are many coaching legends in the world of sports. Newt Brockney, Casey Stengel, and my hero, Hayden Fox. Now, you may know him simply as Coach. He's my kind of guy. He's funny, he's sweet, and he's the object of every woman's fantasy. Except my woman. <laughs> she already found the man of her dreams. So, watch me and Rosie, then stick around for Craig T. Nelson as coach. Tuesdays. I'm so proud. Are you tired of driving the same old car or truck? Pastrella General Motors in Huron has the solution. At Pastrella's, you can choose from 160 clean, locally pre-owned vehicles, all with special tournament prices. A beautiful 1990 Cadillac Brougham, only 13,000 miles, and loaded with equipment tournament priced at $22,500. Or a 1989 Cadillac Sedan DeVille, only 9,300 miles, full leather seating, and loaded with equipment tournament priced at $22,800. Take advantage of tournament specials, competitive financing, and their huge selection of clean, pre-owned cars and trucks. Compare prices today at Prostrado General Motors in Huron. They really make it worth the trip. Back at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center. We're ready to begin the second quarter as DeSmet leading Custer 16-15. This is the Bulldogs with the ball from DeSmet. And uh, we'll see if it turns into the Brad Cruz show again. He certainly was the star in the first quarter. Mike Dorton muscling him. Pass goes underneath four Custer Wildcats there, and they come up with a turnover. Forced the pass in a little bit, though. Third turnover of the ball game for the Bulldogs. Wildcats running. Wallstrom oh. takes it inside. Oh! <laughs> In your face, can I believe it? Says Brad Cruz, but he got called for the foul. That is his first. Boy, can Cruz get up? But obviously, he must have gotten a, a piece of Justin Wallstrom. As we check the Norwest stat board for the first quarter, Brad Cruz leading the way with 12 points for the Bulldogs. Trevor Long with 11 for the Wildcats. And that's all the scoring in the game right there. Four players have scored. Wallstrom at the line hits the first. Justin is a 66% free throw shooter. And now he has one point for the ball game. First personal on Cruz, by the way. And the third team foul on DeSmet. Custer already in, over the limit with five. Makes them both. So now, Custer takes the lead, 17-16. Back comes Bill Vincent for the Bulldogs. Now he has the ball down low. Working against the zone. Well, the Bulldogs pretty spread out. Hine will throw one up from three-point range, and he hits it. Jason Hine, now one of two, he has three points. And if the Bulldogs start hitting their threes consistently, Custer's going to have problems on defense. I think both sides the same way. The defensive right now are not extending out because the shots are not falling from the outside. Trevor Long misses. Quickly, back comes Hine. Here's a three attempted, and swift through by Ryan Larson. That's his second of the game. He now has seven points, and that Larry Luchens has got to be wondering. And as cold as DeSmet was in the first quarter, they're two for two here in the second, both on three-pointers. Trevor Long drives in. Back out we go to Travis Lipp. The Bulldogs just four of 11 from the field in the first quarter. We'll see if the Wildcats try to establish some inside play. Trevor Long follows his own miss, gets it back again. We'll put it up in the paint and hit. Oh. Trevor Long is six foot four, and it helped him there. Third time the charm that time down. Brad Cruz finally gets it underneath, puts up the shot a little long. His first miss. And back comes Custer, trailing it by three. 
Lance Luchens drives the paint, misses. And Lance 0 for 2 so far, turned over. And he will slow it down and wait for his buddies to come down. Travis Lip looking inside. Custer really no inside game thus far. As we talked about Mike Gordon, not known as a real power scorer. Long drives it and hits. Trevor now with four in the second quarter, and he's really all you can say for Custer right now. He's got 15 of their 21. And again, the Wildcats in the zone. Spent leads it by one. Very simple for the Wildcats, or for the Bulldogs, rather. They either get it inside to Brad Cruz or watch Larson or Hine throw up a three-pointer. Here's Hine, or Chuck it, Larson. He misses. And now Custer with a chance to take the lead. 5-13. Left to go second quarter. And Custer trails at 22-21. Travis Lip looking at Larson. This is Lance Luchin. Forever long. And he is giving the Wildcats all their scoring. Goes baseline. Nice pass to Wallstrom. And it looks like Brad Cruz picks up his second foul. Now, interesting decision for Marv McCoon. Look at it again underneath. Jump off inside alert to uh, Wallstrom, and there is uh, Cruz right there on the arm. Picks up a second personal. The Bulldog doesn't, doesn't like what he look. sees. And uh, Cruz is going to stay in there with two personals. Custer will inbound. And that's the way Custer gets it inside as Luchin fires up a three and misses. Rebounded by Custer. Steal to uh, Travis Lip. He misses. And that's the first offensive uh, rebound except for Trevor Long, I can recall, for Custer. Back down the other way. Vincent from inside the three-point line. He misses. Travis Lip rebound. Right now we got a miss fest going on here. But if Custer's going to get it inside, it's going to be penetration by Long and then dishing off. They're not passing the ball into their big men. Way outside is Lip. He switches it through. And Travis Lip now has seven points. And Custer takes the lead, 24-23. Timeout by the Bulldogs. 4-11, left to go in the first half of play. And we got a dandy going. Custer leading to Smith by two. You're watching the State A on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. Particularly picky people do everything for picture-perfect soybeans. You pick at lamb's quarters and pesky pigweed and get pretty punchy pulling velvet meat. But now you can tank mix new pinnacle herbicide. It's extra punch pounds problem weeds to a pump. New DuPont pinnacle. The post picky people pick. The Promise. Quality grain and a clean sample. Promise delivered by John Deere Maximizer Combines. A slow-moving cylinder. More concave area and the exclusive QuadraFlow cleaning system give you the capacity to gently handle any crop, any condition. The Promise of clean grain and more of it. Delivered by your John Deere dealer. See these John Deere dealers. Welcome back to the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center. Steve Sotak and Jeff Harkness enjoying another excellent ball game, and we've had plenty. As Custer leading to Smet, 24-22, 4.08 left to go, second quarter. And to Smet with the basketball, and the Custer Wildcats in a 2-3 zone. One team, both teams have really kept down in the first half so far. The turnovers, four for the Bulldogs, three so far for the Wildcats. Bill Vincent fires it back outside to Brian Weiss. The 5'9 senior will set it up again, looking for, guess who? Brad Cruz, inside, outside play. Shot put up and missed by Vincent. Cruz underneath, battles, doesn't come up with it. And I'm sure he was concerned with his two fouls staying away. Now, if I'm Custer, thought has to cross my mind, give it to Trevor Long and let him try to penetrate and get Cruz with three fouls. The Wildcats need to do something to shake it up because they're out of their game as well as the Bulldogs right now. Here's Long looking inside. Nice catch. And Carter oh. rejected. Brad Cruz. Swats it away and they get the turnover. Again, the great leaping ability of Cruz coming into play. And he is a dominant force on both ends of the floor. And to Smet again, a chance to tie it up. Ryan Weiss will set it up against the zone. 
Comes over to behind. Jason goes baseline. Has a little room. Stops, pops, and hits. Jason now with five points. Nice play that time by Hine. And so we have a tie ball game. And falling away on the jumper, knowing the defense was there. And steal he's by steal. He will take it against Trevor Long and a foul call. First personal on Trevor Long. Had a smart foul, trying to keep Weiss from going in for the easy two. Here comes Brian on the breakaway. Trevor comes across and slaps him on the right arm. Uh, when they say reaching in, that's, that's what they mean. That's, that's the one. You look up reaching into the dictionary. It's got a picture of that right there. So Brian Weiss will go to the free throw line. He averages 15 points a game. That's the first. And the Smet takes the lead. Weiss's first point of the ball game. Mike Dorton will be checking in for Custer, see what he can do down on the box against Brad Weiss. As miss by Weiss. Made one of two, and DeSmet with a one-point lead. Here come the Custer Wildcats. Travis Lip over to Trevor Long. And uh, Bulldogs in the zone. Lip from way outside. Misses. But Custer gets it back. Horna will fire it to Long. Thinks about a three. Will try it from a little further out and misses. Travis Lip got pushed, no call. Campbell comes up with a rebound, and Custer having their shooting problem. Long just two of six so far here in the second quarter. Again, Custer struggling for the field. And no inside play at all. Jason Hines setting it up for the Bulldogs. Campbell is in there now, number 44. Jay Steele and Brad Cruz going to war inside. Shot put up and missed by Weiss. Battle underneath, Cruz has it. He'll go against Steele. Stop, pops, does not get the roll, and Steele comes down with a rebound, but he traveled. He and Travis Lip battled. And Cruz. wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. Thought perhaps a, a technical called on Travis Lip. He slammed the ball down. But it wasn't. Cruz very close to picking up his third personal here. Throws up the miss. Steele goes up for it. Cruz reaches in. Two Wildcats battling for the ball. And Larry Luce is looking on as the Bulldogs will set it up again. Fifth turnover for the Wildcats. Picked off. Wallstrom. He has long with him. Justin Wallstrom takes it himself. Counting. Lost the foul. Here comes Justin Wallstrom. Vincent gets back, but he gets him on the arm. And Justin Wallstrom is one of the Custer players that hit the weights over the offseason. Thought that the Wildcats need a little more size after they were beaten by Vermillion. And on a play like that, strength is what makes the difference. Bill Vincent, just first personal foul. Wallstrom up on his tiptoes, couldn't quite get the roll. And Back we and forth Custer, we go. Custer by one. Whoa. Pass thrown away, yes. Jason Hine tried to throw the skip pass all the way across the zone to Bill Vincent. Vincent couldn't quite come up with it. Six turnover for the Bulldogs, and they trail it by one. Minute 40 left to go. Here in the first half, Wallstrom looking inside to Shad Cornet. There you get a good look at the Smet zone set up there, 2-1-2, two, two, with Cruz in the middle. And the wings, oh, where there's an opening and a miss put up, Custer will get it back. Actually, on a 2-1-2, two, two, the top of the circle is really the open spot. You split the two guys up top. And I'm sure Trevor Long would be mighty happy just standing out there and firing up three-pointer. Jeremy Campbell did a nice job that time rotating up to get a hand on Long's Trevor face. gets a little closer. Impressive the way Trevor can hit off glass from far outside. That is not an easy shot. But he continues to struggle just three of nine here in the second quarter. Custer now with a three-point lead, minute eight. Pass inside to Cruz. Three men on him. He turns and misses. And I'm a bit surprised that Trevor Long brought the shot down and just stood there. Normally, he will try to break it out. And if Cruz goes cold for the Bulldogs, they're in trouble. And the Wildcats will probably set it up here on a spread, look for one shot. They lead by three, 49 seconds left to go first half. And the Bulldogs in their zone are content to just stand out there. And now, official Steve Withorn tells the Bulldogs they have to go play some defense. Wallstrom to lip the Custer's. Trevor Long, he's done the bulk of the scoring for the Wildcats. 27 seconds now left in the first half. 
and so the Wildcats looking to about 15 second mark and then put on a play. Perhaps Trevor Long going a little one on one. Usually 15 is the ideal time because they get in their offense and if there's a miss, they have time to follow it, but the other team does not have a time to bring it down. So much for 15 seconds. Now 10. Lance Luchin checks the clock. Looks to go down to the baseline. Trevor Long, here he is. He'll take it himself. Leans in, misses, rebounded, Cruz. Shot. Long. Jason High, no good. So we have played one half of basketball. And the Custer Wildcats are leading the DeSmet Bulldogs 28 to 25. We'll be back with some halftime festivities. You're watching the State A Boys Basketball Tournament on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. As a meteorologist, I'm a person who uh, studies weather. Hey, Mr. Franchette, thank you for coming to our class to talk about weather. What I like. It was a lot better than reading out of our book. I am glad you invited me. I was always wondering how you got all of that information. Now I know how to talk class. I really enjoyed it. I would like to be a meteorologist when I grow up. That's a good answer. That's good. See, you can't have fair weather and it could be hot. Plots like this help make Kelchin the fastest growing seed name in Dakota country. I'm Wayne Maxwell, Kelchin district sales manager, and on behalf of our Kelchin dealers, a big thank you for planting our products. We know farmers like new hybrids. We have eight new hybrids for 1990, and the Kelchin research team tells us we ain't seen nothing yet. Your Kelchin seed dealer in Watertown is Leon Mack. In Esteline, call Arnold Kelsback, and in Redfield, call David Nelson. Back at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center, where Custer leads DeSmet 28 to 25 at halftime. And as we uh, get ready for the halftime entertainment, I want you to know that this is the Touch of Gold drill team from Lead High School. And they Diane Regan and Lynn Larson. And like you, we will enjoy the Touch of Gold drill team.
The Touch of Gold drill team rocking the house to some Bobby Brown. And now we'll take a look at the Band of the Day Award winner. Lead High School is the Band of the Day Award winner. We'll turn it over to Art Robertson. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to direct your attention to the north end of the arena in front of the band. Our tournament band that has been playing for today's sessions of the Boys Class A State Basketball Tournament is from Lead High School under the direction of Pat Jones. The Lead High School band has had a very active school year. The band has participated in many events, such as the Swarm Days festivities at Black Hill State University, performing at the girls' district and regional basketball tournaments, as well as many pep band events supporting the lead gold diggers. The band is plan currently planning a Memorial Day weekend trip to Denver, Colorado, and will be planning a European tour for the summer of 1993. The band has also had the honor of being the game band for the Rapid City Thrillers basketball game. The band consists of students from grades 9 to 12 and is under the direction of Mr. Pat Jones. In appreciation for the fine music the band has provided during the games, Kenneth Pickering, Assistant Executive Secretary of the South Dakota High School Activities Association, will now present the Pat Jones, director of the Lead High School Band, a plaque to commemorate the day. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a fine hand for the Lead High School Band. Custer leading this Met 28-25. We will take a break and be back just in time for the second half. You're watching the State A on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. <laughs> Your doctor links you to a heart specialist. I'm sure that this uh, relationship with North Central Heart will continue to be a benefit to uh, not only the doctors here, but also uh, mainly to our patients uh, who find it uh, very convenient and uh, an extremely uh, important part of their uh, treatment. You, your doctor, and North Central Heart. Hi. I enjoyed doing BL Striker last year, but it was a lot of work. I'm just going to lay around this year and not do anything. You see, I saved my money, thank God. I got a brand new family. I got a new son. Why would I want to come back to work? There's nothing that could make me come back to work. <laughs> Honey, I thought you said you were going to change the baby. Bird Reynolds cleans up as BL Striker on the ABC Saturday Mystery. I'm back. Here's an important message for parents of high school students in South Dakota from Mr. Gary Olson, president of Norwest Bank, South Dakota. I'm pleased to announce the establishment of the Norwest Bank's Community Scholarship Fund. Through this new fund, every Norwest Bank in South Dakota will offer $1,000 college scholarships to outstanding students attending a South Dakota institution of higher education. We have established this fund to provide new educational opportunities for graduating seniors in Norwest Bank communities. In 1990, we will award a total of 62 of these scholarships. On behalf of all of us at the Norwest Bank throughout South Dakota, we extend our very best wishes to the class of 1990. Scholarship applications are available at your local Norwest Bank, where you come to expect the best. Rushmore Plaza Civic Center in Rapid City, and we are ready for the second half. Custer leading to Smet 28 to 25. Semifinal game here in the State A Boys Basketball Tournament. Earlier tonight, the Red Cloud Crusaders advanced to the final by virtue of a 60-56 win over Lennox. So the Crusaders await the winner of this ball game, and Custer in the purple will get a first crack at the hoop in the second half. The Lennox Bulldogs, excuse me, the Smet Bulldogs, are in a zone defense, it looks like, probably to protect their big guy, Brad Cruz, with foul trouble. Uh, again, it's a 2-1-2, as we saw in the first half. And the place to shoot against the 2-1-2 is top of the circle. But a drive inside, tough shot. Wow, Travis Lip 
with the leaping leaner, and he gets it. That's another way to beat a zone. He now has nine points. Custer up by five. Pass inside, lob pass. Cruz turns and hits. Brad Cruz was scoreless in the second quarter, but he gets to Smith's first bucket here in the third, and it's back to a three-point game. His first hoop since the first quarter. He was 0 for 3 in the second. Trevor Long. Travis Lip from outside. He swishes a three-pointer through. Lip now with five in the quarter, and suddenly he is heating up. Both teams coming out hot as they did in the first quarter. Three-pointer way out. Jason Hines oh. swishes it through. Oh. And we have a shooting show going on right now. That might have been a three in any level of the game. Well, let's see if Lip can respond, or maybe Luchens. Trevor Long in an interesting place on the floor, uh, kind of posting up down on the paint. Lip down to Dorton. Here's Lance Luchens from three. Yes, indeed. Teams obviously changing into their shooting shoes during the halftime break. Mike Dorton not even looking at the basket when he gets the ball. Lance Luchens, that was his first bucket. Steal by Luchens, and he's got Trevor Long ahead of the field, but he'll slow it down and made us throw up a three. After all, they've hit him all so far. Lip over to Luchens. Down to Wallstrom. He thinks about it. Trevor Long spins. Back outside to Luchens. And we'll see if they try to take it in against Cruz and pick up his third foul. Try the other side over here. This is Lip. Back to Luchens. Good patience by Custer. Trevor Long at the free throw line misses. I think he was too close. <laughs> and a foul whistled on Travis Lip. That is his second personal. First team foul on Custer. As you mentioned, Steve, Lip not accustomed to turning around and shooting as we take a look at the first half stat board brought to you by Norris Bank, where you come to expect the best. This match is 7 of 21 of the first half. Custer 11 of 25. The free throw edges of the Bulldogs. Turnover's about even, and Custer winning the board battle right now, 17-11. Most of those free throws by Brad Cruz, they got the ball inside. Take a look. Like that. Awesome. It's nice the way these guys, you know, come up with the plays as you're talking about them. <laughs> so Demonstrate it, guys, and then right there they do. Cruz has 16. Custer now leading at 36-32, 5-12 left to go, third quarter. Travis Lip wants it out here at three-point range. Instead, Lucians will take one, and he hits. Lance, two for two from three-point range here in the third quarter, has six points. And Custer out to a seven-point lead. Cruz will yes, try sir. to respond with four people around him and block cleanly. Gordon. Gordon. That's the kind of defense they need inside on Brad Cruz, and they got it that time. Travis Lip thinks about a three. Wheels and deals. Gives off to Dorton. Dorton can't come up with it. Cruz with a turnover and a foul on Wallstrom. And that is his third personal foul. And we'll see if Justin's going to sit down. Jay Steele is coming in. That is the second team foul on Custer. And it will be Mike Dorton who takes a seat. Jay Steele in with the revolving door center position for Custer. Well, and Dorton did a, an effective job last time down on Cruz. I think it was tough on Cruz to jump with all those bodies around him, and that's why he couldn't get his shot off. Well, he's going to get tired after a while with all those purple shirts banging on him. Down on the baseline, Campbell picked up a, a foul from Lance Luchens. Luchens got him before uh, he went to the hoop. His first personal. And uh, DeSmet will inbound it. Pretty far away from the hoop for Brad Cruz. I'm sure he'll go down in the paint now. Vincent working the offense. Now Hine to Vincent, down to Campbell. Trying to get it to Cruz, but the ball pass was partially deflected. And back comes Custer. Trevor Long with the ball. He may want to take it himself. Nope, goes over to Travis Lip. He'll throw up a shot, and he misses. First miss by Lip in the quarter. Back come the Bulldogs on the run. Hine, stolen away, and Trevor Long has a breakaway. He may dunk it. He's 6'4". Takes it up, lays it in. And now it's 41-32 and a timeout. Barb McCoon says, wait a minute, guys. We better talk about this. Custer has broken a three-point lead into a nine-point lead. 344 left to go as you see Trevor Long take it strong. You're watching the State A on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. 
Dear Jenny, you're so neat. Oh. Usually, I don't usually pour my heart out like this. I'm mesmerized. mesmerized. Your effervescent charm. My passion, my passion for you will never be quenched. I will always thirst for your companionship. Oh, Jenny, you must be so special. I feel like a Pepsi. It's official. John Deere tractors set seven new performance records in the Nebraska tests, including the most fuel-efficient tractor ever tested. Get a good deal on a new John Deere 105 to 200 horsepower tractor and put this record-setting performance to work on your farm today. Another good deal from John Deere. Good deal. See these John Deere dealers. Back at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center, you see the Region 2B scores quickly as Esteline down South Shore. In the 3B, Northwestern gets back at Gettysburg. Gettysburg beat him earlier. Harold is a winner. And in the 4B, Baltic and Wakanda advance. Back here, Custer leading to Smet. 41-32, 3-31 left, third quarter. And the Bulldogs of DeSmet have the basketball. And the winners in those B Region games will score off Saturday night to see who goes to the state tournament. Shot put up by Campbell, way short. It was partially blocked, and Trevor Long has it. As the Bulldogs can't seem to find the hoop now after they started off shooting pretty uh, hot. Trevor Long wheels and deals. Tough shot off glass. He tries, misses. Credit Brian Weiss that time on the defense, partially blocking the shot. And a foul whistled on Trevor Long. His that is second. his second. Maybe a little frustration from Trevor after that shot. Well, again, it was one of those situations where I think Trevor got the basketball, and he also made up his mind that he was going to shoot it. Comes back the other way. The frustration foul again, reaching in on defense. That's going to get a whistle every time. Vincent gets a man in the air. Goes off glass, misses. Cruz, big rebound. Vincent will try it again. Yes, he will. And he hits. Bill Vincent gets on the board with a running one-hander. And the lead is cut to seven. Trevor Long double-teamed a trap, and he throws it out of bounds. And it was a deflection. Off of Brian Weiss, so Custer will get it back as they went to a trapping defense there, Jeff. Nice time uh, that time by DeSmet. Again, as you mentioned, trapping well away from the basket out here in the corner right in front of us, which is where Justin Wallstrom will throw it in. Lance Luchin working against Bill Vincent. Travis Lip trying to post up Brian, uh, Ryan Larson. This is Lance Luchin. Trevor Long turns and faces Brian Weiss. He has a huge height advantage and will take him to the baseline. Stop, pops, hits, but... A foul before the shot. And Brian Weiss was Weiss whistled for his first. I shouldn't have said whistled. See, <laughs> Brian Weiss is called for his first personal foul. More importantly, it was before the shot. As the first uh, team foul on Desmet, so Custer will inbound. Let's try it again. Trevor Long outside, and he misses. Not an easy shot. He had a man in his face, and now a turnover. As the Bulldogs couldn't get it up the floor. Number ten in the turnover department for the Bulldogs. Anytime you get into double digits, you're starting to get into the red zone. I think DeSmet is a little bit out of their tempo in terms of offense. They were hot at the beginning of the quarter, but since then, and a foul whistled on Dorton. Yes. Trying to create some space. <laughs> and Larry Luton lets Mick Weissup know what he thought of that call. <laughs> yeah, no uncertain terms. And we will go to the other end of the floor to shoot free throws as Custer already is in the penalty. And here's the story right here, Steve. A huge discrepancy in the foul department right now. As you mentioned, the Wildcats in the, the penalty. Just one foul up on the board for the Bulldogs. And the foul is on uh, Dorton is first. Bill Vincent at the free throw line. Makes it. Important to hit those front ends of one and ones. In the first half, this met an effective job for the line. They were 8 of 12. Most of those by Brad Cruz. He put on a free throw shooting clinic in the first quarter. That's now four points for Bill Vincent. Some pressure by the Bulldogs. Trevor Long breaks it. He's getting hounded. Puts up a shot. Tough shot, and he makes it. Trevor Long knows how to use the window, folks. 43-36 is the score. Custer with a seven-point lead. 2.04 left third quarter. And the Bulldogs having trouble getting it into their big man, Cruz. 
Custer has pretty much shut him down since the first quarter. And they've got Justin Wallstrom and Lip. And Lance Luchin's helping out. Dorton also. Shot missed, rebounded. Put up and missed by Larson and rebounded by Custer. You can see when Custer's zone, when the ball comes to the strong side, the weak side guy is helping out on Cruz. They put three guys, Trevor Long into the paint. And a no foul shot. before the shot. Whistled on Brian Weiss. That is his second personal. And uh, we'll, with a non-shooting foul, and only the second team foul on Smith, so Custer will inbound. What an effective job that time, Steve. A little triangle set up around Brad Cruz at the other end. Travis Lip on one side, Mike Dorton on the other side, Justin Wallstrom on the other side. Every time Cruz gets the ball, he attracts a crowd. Next time the Bulldogs are on offense, will try to go to a high shot, and you can see the way the zone moves, and they'll get it back right here because this will be backcourt. Second turnover in the second half for the Wildcats, number seven of the ball game. And Larry Luchin says, wait a minute, we want a timeout. Larry Luchin's also wants to know why that was a backcourt violation. And Mick Weissup will explain it to him with a little help from Steve Withorn. Look at the intensity in Larry's eyes. And uh, while they do that, we will take a break. 131 left to go. Third quarter. Larry's Custer team is ahead. They lead the Smith 43-36. You're watching the State A Boys Basketball Tournament on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. Thinking about installing an electric heat pump for your home? Here's what some electric cooperative members have to say. Well, it's always there. Winter or summer, it's always ready to keep you comfortable. It's worry-free. You never have to fill a tank or worry about the price of getting out of hand. After having the heat pump, I can't imagine going back to the old furnace or air conditioner again. Cash incentives, low interest loans, and special electric rates are available. So talk to your electric cooperative about a heat pump for your home today. Technology, expertise, state-of-the-art diagnostic and surgical equipment, and excellent care. All describe the quality health services found in Aberdeen. Over 2,000 healthcare professionals in a wide variety of specialties work hard to provide quality care day in and day out close to home. Isn't it nice to know that Aberdeen's healthcare professionals are there, providing you with the care you need when you need it? Aberdeen, your partner in healthcare. Back at the plaza, Jeff, we have a replay. Well, did he or didn't he is the question. Did Travis Lip touch this ball? If he did, it's a backcourt violation when they get it. If he didn't, they can do it. It looks like he did. And, and it's a backcourt violation. And that's why this man has the ball, and they throw it right away. Or maybe a moot point. 43-36, <laughs> Custer leading to Smith, 121 left, third quarter. Trevor Long takes it into the paint, and there is Cruz whistled. And this is a big one, folks, for his third personal foul. And credit Trevor Long with taking the action right to Brad Cruz. We thought he they saw big number earlier. 40, and he took it right into him. Forced the issue by jumping right into Cruz. Brad called for the personal on the arm, and Jeremy Campbell is going to come in, and more than likely it will be for Brad Cruz. Trevor Long misses. And that's unusual. Trevor is a 77% free throw shooter. And no, Cruz is going to stay out there. I think without Cruz, they wouldn't have a, a hope. <laughs> So he's going to stay out there, and uh, Larson will sit down as well, Campbell comes in. Well, you'd think, Steve, for the last 117 of the quarter, they'd at least sit him down. Especially since they could probably come down here and hold for a last shot. And maybe that's what they'll do. Wouldn't want him to pick up something uh, on a rebound, though, going yeah, for the basketball. Fine. Campbell tipped out of bounds by Walston. Bulldogs will retain possession. They trail by eight points. 44-36, Custer leads it. And just a little over a minute left, third quarter. Ryan Weiss over to Jason Hine. Down in the corner to Campbell, back to Hine. And Custer in a 2-3 zone. And you'll see everybody collapse on number 40. And it's thrown away. Trevor Long will now bring it back. 48 seconds left. Lance Luchin. And this would be a good time for Custer to try one of those three-pointers. Give him a lot of momentum at the break. And they're going to take the air out of it for the last 40 seconds. And why not? They lead it by eight. They'll hold and try to set up a last shot. And you have to believe this guy will have the ball in his hands. And uh, but the Smet people think Trevor Long traveled. Mick Weissup doesn't, and he's the one with the whistle in his mouth. So uh, no traveling call. Lance Luchin working against Bill Vincent. He and Trevor Long back here. 
Holding on to the ball. Now 15 seconds, and it's time to go on offense. Trevor Long working against Jason Hine. He has a big height advantage. Travis Lip back to Trevor Long. Now eight seconds. Looking inside. Passes to Lip. He will wheel and deal. We'll shoot it. And oh. rejected. Two seconds. One shot. No. Well, what a big defensive play by Brad Coos there at the end of the quarter. It's 44-36. We will come back for the final eight minutes, possibly. It may go to OT. You never know. In just a minute, you're watching the State A and Brad Cruz on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. Are you tired of driving the same old car or truck? Pastrella General Motors in Huron has the solution. At Pastrella, you can choose from 160 clean, locally pre-owned vehicles, all with special tournament prices. Get this family-sized 84 Chevy half-ton suburban 4x4 Silverado. It's super clean. This truck will do everything. Now only $8,800. Or look at this sharp, clean 88 half-ton Chevy 4x4 pickup. Low mileage and tournament price at just eleven five. Take advantage of tournament specials, competitive financing, and their huge selection of clean pre-owned cars and trucks. Compare prices today at Prostrado General Motors in Huron. They really make it worth the trip. We have to talk. About what? Gasoline. You get good gas. It's not Amoco Ultimate. No. You want quick start, smooth idle, great acceleration? Of course. Then give me the good stuff. Listen to your engine. Pure Amoco Ultimate is rated the highest quality gasoline. You give me quality, I give you performance. Amoco Ultimate. Your car knows, and now you do too. See Ellsworth Oil in Sisseton and Mo Oil in Watertown. Back at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center. And you see some of the Custer folks. And they enjoy what they've seen so far. As the Wildcats lead the Smet 44-36. We are in the fourth quarter. The Smet Bulldogs in white set it up against a Custer zone. Bill Vincent looking inside for Cruz, tipped, and Dorton comes up with it. And that Wildcat defense is getting better at stopping those passes to Cruz. Already seven turnovers, more than they had in the first quarter. Trevor Long, he scored in every quarter. He's not cold tonight. 24 for Long. And the ball almost taken away by Luchens. And now Vincent down to the baseline. Back outside to Hine. And here's the pass to Cruz. Men all around him, he scores. 18 for Brad. And it's back to an eight-point lead for Custer. Trevor Long to Justin Wallstrom. Back to Long. And it looks like this Met has gone to a man-to-man -man defense. <coughs> and Lance Luchin takes Bill Vincent to the paint and scores. He has a three-inch height advantage, and he used it well there. You can't let Lance Luchin that close into the basket. He'll burn you, and he did that time. He's got eight. Bill Vincent looking inside. This is Hine. Brian, uh, check that, Brian Weiss. Back out to Vincent, throws up a three, short. And Custer gets it, they'll not run though, they'll slow it down. Trevor Long with the ball over to Luchens. And uh, if the Bulldogs saying this man-to-man, -man, he's got a, a height disadvantage against Lance Luchens, and I think Luchens will be wise to take him inside. Man-to-man -man defense now by the Bulldogs. Now Trevor Long wheels and deals. He misses, but Dorton there for the rebound. Fakes, scores, no, he travels. The right idea, but Dorton shuffled his feet. And I believe we're going to take a timeout. Yes, we are. 6-13 left to go fourth quarter. And the Custer Wildcats lead the Smet now. Biggest lead of the game, 10 points. You're watching the State A on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. Many of the patients I see at Charter Hospital are dealing with hurts and disappointments that have been going on for many years, and it's scary for them to make the decision to finally work on those problems. I think one of the most rewarding things is actually seeing the change that they experience and seeing them more capable of going out and dealing with their lives more effectively and finding out that it's okay to ask for help. If you don't get help at Charter, please get help somewhere. I don't understand. How can Hy-Vee say they have lots of little differences? I mean, how can they call their Blue Ribbon meats a little difference? Now, when they say only the best deserves a Blue Ribbon, well, that's exactly what you get. The best USDA choice beef, fresh pork, grade A chicken, really fresh ground beef, and more. All value trimmed and freshness dated. And then every package is guaranteed. Now, I ask you, is that a little difference? That's a terrific difference. 
Back at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center, Steve Sotak and Jeff Harkness enjoying an interesting game as Custer leads DeSmet 48 to 38. Jeff, what can uh, Cus uh, DeSmet rather do for some offense? Well, they've got to get it back into Brad Cruz if that's possible. The Wildcats have done a nice job of bottling off big number 40 on the inside, but a great talent like Cruz somehow will find a way to get the basketball. You can see it there with the zone defense. Watch the way the purple shirts collapse on number 40. There he's being bodied by Dorton. Ball thrown away, but it went off Custer. As Dorton and Karna, both postmen in there. And we'll take a look at the uh, leading scores through three. The Norwest stat board. Cruz with 16, Long and Lip. Leading the way for the Wildcats, 22 and 12 for Travis and Trevor. And Brad will try to add to his total here. Tough shot, does not go, but he's fouled. And that's number four on Trevor Long. And very quickly, Justin Wallstrom will be back in there. Uh, the uh, scoreboard has him with three. As you look at the foul trouble, Weiss, Cruz, Hind. Actually, Cruz the only one with three. Wallstrom and now Long does have three. That's three personals on Trevor. Brad Cruz goes to the line and hits. He has not been to the free throw line since the first quarter. And that's mainly because they've had trouble getting in the basketball. This is the second. Rebound by Vincent. He tried. He gave it his all. Couldn't quite come up with it. So Custer will get the basketball. Or will they? Oh, yes, they will. Yep. And DeSmet, the reason I wondered is DeSmet is up there at the other end. They're in a full court press. And they need to be because they're down by nine and time's running out. 5.30 to play in regulation. One way to break a press, give it to this guy, Trevor Long. And now he's trapped, gets it to Wallstrom. Chad Karna wide open down on the box. Didn't pass it, and Dorton will not shoot. He'll throw it right back out. Dorton wide open that time. If he's ever going to take one, that would have been the time. Wallstrom. Now to uh, Lip and over to Long, working against Jason Hine. Here's Wallstrom. He's wide open. Oh. Moves in. It misses. But a rebound by Shad Karna. Good rebound. And Custer will try it again. They were begging Wallstrom to shoot that one. He did the right thing. He got a little bit closer, but uh, he missed it. Travis Lip now trapped. Lob pass, and that's when it counts to be 6-4. Trevor Long goes up to get it, fakes. He's got a shot. Pay, great pass for it. Dorton refuses the shoot and finally he does. Mike Dorton now has four points. You get the impression that Dorton's looking for an engraved invitation before he's going to put it up. Cruz has it. We'll wait and see the call here. And Karna. a foul. Called on Chad Karna. That is three. Uh, Mr. Corner, take a look. And again, DeSmet trying to get it inside, and before Cruz can put it up, Shad Corner comes down on the arm. Mm -hmm. Substitutions galore now. Jay Steele back in there. Lance Luchin's back in there. Shad Corner takes a seat. Mike Dorton will take a seat. Brad Cruz will go to the line. Well, Custer going a little smaller now on the front line, and Ed Corner and Dorton both in there. You're looking at 6-4, or 6-5, rather. Check that, 6-6 six, six and 6-6. Six, six. That's 20 now for Cruz. Now they have Steele in there. He's 6'5", and Wallstrom will try to help out. And he does, but he traveled. So that's a turnover. And how effective has Brad Cruz been in this ball game? His team has 40. He has 20. Pass outside, and what do we have? Traveling. Walk. And it looks like Jason Hine hurt his leg. And maybe that's why he traveled. Hine, to see if he's okay. You can see him hobbling. I think he was so wide open, he was in such a hurry to get the three that he shuffled his feet trying to get to the orange line. Token pressure by DeSmet, but once Trevor Long gets it, they back off. Steal attempt. Nice play by Weiss. Went off Weiss. Justin Wallstrom will inbound. It's 50-40. to 40. Custer with a 10-point lead. 426 left. Justin Wallstrom. Lance Luchens thinks about a three. And he'll take it to the paint. He drives up and no. And then I think perhaps Cruz got a finger on that one. Back comes Bill Vincent the other way. Passes it back. Larson with it. Now all the way over to Hine. Back to Larson. He can shoot the threes. He'll try one. And misses. Shot was long. Right underneath. And the Wildcats come up with it. Jay Steele with a pretty good rebound. Larson very close to picking up his fourth personal that time. Trevor Long, a little clear out for him. 
And now Travis Lip to Luchens, who stumbles, comes up with it. And it's starting to get into uh, nervous time for DeSmet. They're going to have to get a little more aggressive with their defense. They trail by 10 in just 3.36 left to go fourth quarter. Trevor Long, wheels and deals. Does he get the roll? No, but Jay Steele, big rear bounce, smart play, threw it right back out. And that'll be more time eaten off the clock by Custer. Trevor Long to Travis Lip. Bill Vincent out on him. Looks inside and uh, bring it back outside. Pass down to Steele and Cruz uh -oh. whistle for his uh -oh. fourth personal foul. Uh-oh is right. And I bet every fan over there in the DeSmet section said the same thing. And it's not as big now because there's only 317 left, and they're not going to take Cruz out more than likely. But a silly foul as he tries to go around Jay Steele, who doesn't have much offense, so you kind of wonder. Exactly. Well, timeout, and we will timeout. take one as well. 317 left to go. Custer leading DeSmet by 10. You're watching the State A Boys Basketball Tournament on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. Across South Dakota, people have come to expect the best from the people of Norwest Bank. From Sturgis to Del Rapids, Norwest people work to keep our family farms and ranches growing. Norwest people help students learn new skills in Brookings, support and serve the elderly in Gregory, foster a growing fishing industry in Mobridge. Come to expect the best, always, from the people at your community Norwest Bank. Down the ten yards, turn back. A break. Down. No matter how good something is, something always comes along that's better. When it comes to weed control in wheat and barley, it's Harmony Extra, the newest way to tackle your toughest broadleaf weeds. Back at the Rushmore Plaza Civic Center, you can see it right on your screen. 317 left to go fourth quarter, and Custer leading the Smith by 10 points, and the Wildcats, they have the lead and the basketball. Trevor Long out front, and the Bulldogs a much more aggressive defense now. They've gone to the man-to-man. -man. They're going to try to trap, do whatever it takes to get turnovers. Trevor Long looking inside, and now he's got Wallstrom down low. Turns against Cruz. He has four personal fouls. Travis Lip. Ties up two men to Trevor Long, and the Wildcats looking, looking pretty good in the spread, Jeff. Steve, I wouldn't call this a stall, but it's the next best thing. They are in no hurry to shoot the basketball. Lance Luchens to Trevor Long. Travis Lip wide open. And it's the chase game for the Bulldogs. Now 241 left. Trevor Long back to Travis Lip. And they're you get the feeling to... that Custer has done this before. They're going to have to start fouling here. 50 to 40. It's a 10-point lead for Custer. Now 230 left to go. Travis Lip just standing out there in a turnover. Cruz back down to Jason Hine. He lays it up and in. And Larry Luchin was not pleased at all. He thought his man was fouled. Ten Trevor points Long. for Hine. Trevor Long gets it over to Lance Luchin. Now an eight-point game, 2-12 left, and another steal. Hine runs right into Wallstrom, and Jason Wallstrom whistled for the foul. That is his fourth. And Custer wants a timeout. Take a look at it once again. Luchens has the ball stripped away. And as Hine goes to get it, he's uh, fouled. 208 left. We're going to take a break here watching the State A Boys Basketball Tournament on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. When it comes to hogs, no one knows them better than the good folks at GTA Feeds. Growplex Complete Feeds and Supplements from GTA contain all the nutrients your hogs need for maximum production. Plus, Growplex Feeds contain high levels of lysine to save you money without sacrificing feed quality or performance. Growplex Feeds are also available with Thailand. See your GTA Feeds dealer today and put Growplex to work for you. The Promise. Quality grain and a clean sample. Promise delivered by John Deere Maximizer Combines. A slow-moving cylinder, more concave area, and the exclusive QuadraFlow cleaning system give you the capacity to gently handle any crop, any condition. The Promise of clean grain and more of it. Delivered by your John Deere dealer. See these John Deere dealers. With two minutes and eight seconds left in the fourth quarter of a semifinal game in the State A Boys Basketball Tournament, 
Custer leading to Smet by eight, and the Smet will inbound. No, I take that back. They will shoot free throws because Custer is over the limit. Jason Heim will go to the line, an 82% free throw shooter. And Jeff, the uh, Bulldog pressure has caused two quick turnovers. Steve, you mentioned that uh, DeSmel was going to have to turn it up on Hotshot defense, and that they have done quick two, two quick turnovers, but they can't convert this time as Hine misses on the front end of the one and one Trevor Long working to get the pressure against the pressure. This is Travis Lip back to Trevor Long. Minute 57. You can see it right on your screen. They'll try to trap, and now Hine whistles for a foul. And you don't want to foul Trevor Long. Number three on Hine. Kicks the ground in disgust, but I don't think that DeSmet can be very selective right now on who they foul. They just need to stop the clock. And Trevor Long will go to the free throw line, a 77% free throw shooter. He's two for three thus far in this game. Two for four, three for four. Make it four for five. And Custer showed us this yesterday when DeSmet had him in, uh, rather when Platt had him in some problems. Late in the game, they did hit their free throws when they had to. Points 25 and 26 for Trevor Long to lead all scores. Lead back to 10, and the Bulldogs can waste no time getting off a shot. Brad Cruz underneath. Oh, my goodness. Lance Lutzen, not sure what he was complaining about. Because he really hacked Brad Cruz. And that is uh, Lance's second personal. Look at it again. Cruz inside. Nice. Gets it away from Dorton. And Lance I gets it right part. there on the wrist. <laughs> right there. He got the ball to begin with, but then it went to his the wrist. Ha his hand was on the ball, but his wrist was on the wrist. Cruz hits. Now three of five in the fourth quarter from the free throw line. And he comes up short and a foul called on the Bulldogs. Looks like Bryce Gross who just checked in. Number 30, the 510 junior. Yes, it is. But that's what they've got to do. You might as well do it as soon as possible when he did it on the rebound. And Mike Dorton will go to the free throw line. He And they fouled the right guy. <laughs> According to the statistics Custer supplied us with, he is a 52% free throw shooter. So it is an adventure when Mike Dorton goes to the line. Dorton just two points, and he had to be coaxed into taking that shot earlier. He looked like a 52% free throw shooter on that one. And back come the Bulldogs. They trail by nine. Shot put up, missed, but Brad Cruz can't get it to go. Oh, and he was in a great place to shoot from. And now a foul. Boy, Brad Cruz couldn't believe it himself when that shot didn't go down. Well, and DeSmet right now wasting some golden opportunities. He just Larry, can't get the ball to go down. Larry Luchin's looking for the intentional foul. He's not going to get it. Justin Wallstrom will go to the line for the one and one. A minute 34 left. Four on Hine. Justin Wallstrom, a 66% free throw shooter. And he is two of three thus far. Substitution. As out goes Gross and back in comes Ryan Larson. Justin Wallstrom hits. And that's now three of four from the free throw line for Custer here in the fourth quarter. And I will have to believe they'll have many more chances in the quarter. Wallstrom gets his second. The lead is now 11. And DeSmet throws a ball away. Trevor Long comes up with a turnover, and Custer is in the driver's seat. Travis Lip, double team. And a foul called on. Ryan Larson just checked into the game. That'll be his first personal. And Travis Lip will go to the free throw line for more free throws. And again, like they did last night against Platt, if Custer can put down the 15-footers, they will advance to the championship where Red Cloud awaits. Custer Wildcats 23-0. They've hit free throws down the stretch all year. And they get the roll from Travis Lip. That is his first points in the quarter and his first free throw. I want to mention quickly the consolation scores from this afternoon. Steve Miller beat Lemon 91-75. Hamlin beat Platt 80-48. Hamlin and Miller will play for the consolation championship tomorrow afternoon. Lemon and Platt will play for seventh place. And the fouling strategy not working for the Bulldogs as Custer now leads it by 13. They've made six of seven free throws in the fourth quarter, but here we see a foul against Custer, Trevor Long. It's his fourth. His fourth personal. 
And back at the free throw line is Brad Cruz. This will be the 15th free throw Cruz has shot in the after the uh, evening. Hits it. Makes it a 12-point game. Desmet, I'm afraid, is running out of time for the Bulldog fans. Short, I think he missed it on purpose. Trevor Long hit in the head. And I'm not sure who he's pointing at for the foul. Steve Withorn will tell us. On it's four, Larson, and he's oh. gone. No, I believe he said 4-0. Right, uh, Cruz, your Cruz is gone. That is Brad Cruz. I had the gone part right, but the wrong name. And Brad Cruz will sit down, get a standing ovation from the DeSmet fans. There he is. You can look for him in the North Central Conference next year or maybe somewhere else, but I bet you can look for him to play college basketball. You can also look for him on the top of the scoring sheet tonight for the Bulldogs. He sits down with 22 points. He's a 6'5 senior. Had a tremendous game, gave it his all. And now he'll have to watch as Trevor Long shoots free throws. And Trevor Long, 77% free throw shooter. He hit them all in the fourth quarter last night, and he's doing it again tonight. Don't forget, we will see DeSmet one more time. And we also see Lennox one more time. Those two will play for third place tomorrow night. And we'll have that game for you at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, 8 o'clock Central Time. Tough shot. Hit by Jason Hine. Then it'll be the championship game in all West River affair this year. Custer will be going up against Red Cloud. One minute left in this ball game and a timeout called by Custer. And uh, we will probably get to hear what uh, goes on in the huddle. Not a whole lot for Coach Marv McCoon to say. His team trails by 12 points with just 57 seconds left. And I'm sure for Larry Luchens, it'll be the kind of thing we heard from Dusty, Dusty LeBeau earlier, control it. Let's hear from Larry Luchens. Uh, be smart. Don't foul. Don't foul. That's the only way. That's the only way to stop the clock. Don't foul. Let's go, guys. All right, let's go. 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 Short and sweet from Larry Luton. Don't foul him. It's the only way they can win this game. And I think he's right. Well, Lester Smith can get red hot from three-point land. Their uh, hopes will be for third place tomorrow night. Custer in this uh, situation, good passing, good ball handlers. They have the uh, kind of people you need in a situation like this where you're going to try to run out of clock. Trevor Long working, and uh, Hine tried to go behind him and steal it. Couldn't quite come up with it. This is Luchens, and he almost turns it over, but Trevor Long comes up with it. And they're way out here. Someone's open underneath. Justin Wallstrom is open underneath, takes it up, lays it in. And they made it look easy. 36 seconds. Look for a three-pointer. they got to get in a hurry. Bill Vincent. He's double teamed. Way out blocked by Trevor Long. Brian Weiss had his shot blocked. Now down low and Campbell turns, gets the roll no. Travis Lipp with the basketball. Just 20 seconds to go and Trevor Long has it. And the Custer Wildcats are gonna win this game. And they looked a lot better tonight than they did last night. And now a timeout by Custer as Larry Luchens will clear his bench once we're done with this timeout. And the Custer fans know that they are going to win this game. And it will be the rematch that the Red Cloud Crusaders had hoped for. We'll be focusing back to December 16th was the first time that the Crusaders and the Wildcats met. As we listen in, I'm Arv McCune. Marv McCoon with a class play there. He doesn't want anybody to get hurt. This game cannot be won. He says, don't foul. Just let him bring it in. Try to play tough defense, but don't hack anybody and send him to the line. And Custer has cleared the bench. And I'm going to have to look for one of my sheets to find out who's in there. Here we go. Into the ball game for Custer is Tim Hazlitt, number 11. And he has the basketball. Passes off to Chris Daly. Daly puts up a shot and misses. 
Just three seconds, two, one, and that is it. And the Custer Wildcats, the number one ranked team in Class A, the undefeated pride of Custer, South Dakota, advance with a 60 to 46 win over the DeSmet Bulldogs. A great effort by DeSmet, especially their star player, Brad Cruz. The Custer came to the free throw line and hit when they needed to. They win by 14. We will take a break and come back with an interview. You're watching the State A on KOTA and the Eyewitness Sports Network. 